Previet. Flip-flops can only change state on the appropriate edge of the clock waveform, either the positive edge or the negative edge. That is where we ended last video with our discussion of D flip-flops. That fact will not change in this lesson as we study two other types of flip-flops, JK and T. This slide shows a positive edge triggered JK flip-flop. The name JK is an homage to Jack Kilby, who is the engineer who was the co-inventor of the handheld calculator, the thermal printer, and most notably, the integrated circuit. So, the letters J and K are not abbreviations for operations, like they are on the SR latch. Speaking of SR, the modes for a JK flip-flop are almost identical. An instruction set of 0, 0 causes no change, 0, 1 causes reset, and 1, 0 causes set. So, J is similar to S, and K is similar to R. But the big new mode is found in this bottom row. In an SR latch or flip-flop, the instruction set 1, 1 is invalid. In a JK flip-flop, 1, 1 causes a toggle, which means that the output changes state. So, a current state of Q equals 1 would become Q equals 0, or a current state of Q equals 0 would become Q equals 1. That is the meaning of this notation in the table. In toggle mode, Q sub T plus 1 equals Q sub T prime. The next output equals the complement of the current output. Just like we saw with the D flip-flop, this left column indicates the brief sliver of time when the flip-flop is enabled to change state. Since the device symbol has no bubble in front of the clock input, this is positive edge triggered and up arrows are placed on the table. All of this information combines to explain this timing diagram. I draw faint vertical lines at the positive edge of each clock cycle to remind me that these are the only instants when Q can change. Then, I look at the J and K instructions to dictate how Q will change. Without being given the starting value, I actually don't know what Q equals before the first positive edge, so I have a question mark there. But then, at that first positive edge, J equals 0 and K equals 1, which is the instruction for reset mode. Therefore, Q is forced to be a 0. Now Q is just waiting, waiting, waiting at 0 until it is enabled to change on the next positive edge. That occurs here. So I look at the instructions. J equals 0 and K equals 0. This is no change mode, so Q remains at 0. At the next positive edge, J equals 1 and K equals 1. This is toggle mode, so Q changes state. It was a 0, now it is a 1. One clock cycle later, the flip-flop is in reset mode, so Q is forced to 0. At the next positive edge, Q does not change. Then, at the last one in this diagram, Q is set. Notice how I was careful to not care about the J and K values in between those vertical lines. The only times the instructions matter are at positive edges. That changes on this slide. The device symbol does now feature a bubble, so this is a negative edge triggered JK flip-flop. The only change in the characteristic table is that the arrows point down in this column. All the other columns remain exactly the same. So it won't be hard to modify what we learned last slide to understand this timing diagram. I begin by drawing vertical lines at all of the negative edges. Then I look for the instructions at each of those lines. Again, with this question mark, Q is unknown until that first instruction. But here I see that J equals 1 and K equals 0. This is set mode. So Q is forced to a 1. At the next negative edge, J equals 1 and K equals 1. This is toggle mode, so Q changes state from a 1 to a 0. It is still toggle mode at the next negative edge, 
So Q toggles again, this time from a 0 to a 1. One clock cycle later, it is no change mode, so Q remains at a value of 1. Next comes reset mode, so Q equals 0. And finally, I see no change mode, so Q remains at 0. This leads us to the last type of basic flip-flop we will study, the T flip-flop. Like the D flip-flop, it has only one instruction input. The T is short for toggle. The characteristic table tells us that if T equals 1, then the toggle operation is activated, and Q will change states on each clock cycle. But if T equals 0, then the toggle operation is deactivated, so Q will not change. Because the T flip-flop does not have a set or reset mode, it actually requires a starting value loaded into it. In the next lesson, we will look at asynchronous preset and clear inputs, but we aren't there yet. For now, let's just assume that Q starts low. So looking at the timing diagram, we see that Q begins at zero, and vertical lines are drawn at each of the positive edges. At that first positive edge, T equals zero, and therefore the circuit is in no change mode. Thus, Q remains at zero. One clock cycle later, T equals one, indicating toggle mode. And so, Q jumps from zero to one. At the next positive edge, T still equals one, and so Q jumps from one back down to zero. The next two clock cycles, both have the no change instruction, which is why we see Q stuck at zero. At the final positive edge, T equals one and Q toggles from zero up to one. Admittedly, I went a little quickly through those last timing diagrams, but I hope you see how once you understand the basic modes of a flip-flop, set, reset, no change, and toggle, then all of these timing diagrams become straightforward to fill out. Now, straightforward does not mean foolproof. It still requires close attention to focus on the correct clock edges and then to apply the correct instruction.